Hey there, I'm Kit, I'm Literate, and in this video we're going to be talking about all the books I read in October. I think this is a very interesting camera angle. I put this book back here because I just finished talking about it in its own video just for it. Um, but then I was like, no, like it's in the background. You, you can see it perfectly. Today is October 1st. Technically speaking, it is now October 2nd because it's past midnight, but midnight. I haven't been able to talk all day. been doing stuff like that where instead of midnight, I say midnight. <sighs> I finished this book at like 11.55. So technically speaking, I finished it on October 1st. This is If You Could See the Sun by Anne Liang. This book is about a girl named Alice who is going to this very prestigious private academy sort of thing, but she finds out that her parents aren't going to be able to afford the tuition for her education here. She either has two options. She can go to a private school that is in like a cheaper area, um, or she can stay in the same area but go to public school instead. Just after that meeting with her parents, she turns invisible, like full on, no explanation for it, just turns invisible. And she decides that she is going to use this to her advantage. She's going to find out the secrets of all of her classmates and get them to pay her money for basically like private investigation sort of stuff. This book also goes into a little bit about just how far she's going to go um, in order to get money how illegal the things that she does is for monetary value. And there's also, just by the way, a side plot. This guy who is, like, they're both competing for who is the number one top student in the entire school. Academic rivals, right? There ain't that much rivalry in this relationship as she thinks there is. I'm just saying. I really enjoyed this book. It was so good. I ended up rating it five stars, the highest it could possibly be, and I really recommend it. If it sounds interesting to you, we get a little like YA romance. Maybe not like mystery, but thriller perhaps? I'm not a big thriller reader, so. I don't know all the terminology for that genre as a whole, but um, I'd say it's pretty thrillery. This book also, by the way, I know that like by the time that this video is out, this book will have already been out. This book gets published October 11th, so it's like a new release, right? So you should go pick it up. Alright, today is October 8th, and I just finished Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is a reread of this book, but I wanted to do it because my friends and I started a book club where we send each other our favorite books, we annotate it, um, and then the person who owns the book gets the book back with all their friends' annotations and all their friends' favorite moments. So uh, this was my first pick for our little book club. I want to make all my friends read it. If you haven't heard of this book before, this is the story of a girl named Emily she moves in with her older sister who had recently gotten into a car accident just to like help out her older sister has a kid so help out with making sure that her daughter gets to all the places that she needs to help out around the house one of the things that the daughter caitlin wants to do is she wants to join this renaissance festival as like one of the cast one of the things that the renaissance festival needs is anybody under the age of 18 has to have a parent or guardian who signs up with them and volunteers so emily volunteers with caitlin the two of them go through this renaissance festival together the person who puts the renaissance festival together the leader whatever we want to call him is simon he's kind of an ass uh, but he dresses up as a pirate during the Renaissance Festival, and in this pirate persona, he reveals that he kind of has a crush on the main character. And they see how that goes throughout this book. I really like it. Obviously, I'm forcing my friends to read it. The first time that I read this, I rated it five stars. I think I still stick to that rating. 
it's pretty good. I liked it a lot. And I'm excited for my friends to read it so I can read their thoughts on it. It's October 9th. Well, technically speaking, it's October 10th, but I finished the book October 9th at like 11.55, so. Um, I just finished Always the Almost by Edward Underhill. And I was really highly anticipating this book, but I didn't like it, and I'm disappointed in that. Mostly disappointed at myself for having such high expectations. I don't fault the book in any way, it just was not the book for me. Always the Almost is about a boy named Miles. One very important thing about him is he is trans. Um, he used to be dating this guy named Shane, who is the quarterback of the football team, I believe, in their high school. Um, but they broke up when Miles came out as trans because Shane is not attracted to guys. Miles is still trying to get Shane back, however, trying to make Shane see that he is the same person, even though now he is out as male. Miles is also working on a piano competition, um, focusing a lot about that one day while he is practicing piano. Uh, there is this new guy, new kid at their school, who happens to be sitting in the practice room. His name is Eric, um, and he very quickly becomes friends with both Miles and Miles' two friends, Rachel and Paige. Rachel and Paige really want to go to this Valentine's party, uh, but the only way that you can be invited to it is if you are dating someone. Um, Rachel and Paige are dating. Miles isn't dating anybody. Eric isn't dating anybody. So Miles and Eric decide that they are going to fake date in order to get into this Valentine's party, and along the way decide they actually like each other and they are going to actually date. However, Miles still has feelings for Shane, still wants to get back together with Shane, and so the book is half about the piano competition, half about Miles' feelings for his ex and whether or not he should continue to go after his ex or continue to see his new boyfriend. I really liked the piano side of the discussion. However, I was not a fan of Miles' obsession with Shane, and that really hurt my enjoyment of this book for me. I ended up rating it two stars. Like I said at the beginning of this, I don't think that it is a bad book. I just personally didn't enjoy it. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in, I'd say go for it, read it. Um, but I didn't like it, didn't personally enjoy it, and I, as I said, am very disappointed because this is one of my most anticipated books of the year. Since this is an ARP, I feel the need to tell you Always the Almost by Edward Underhill comes out February 14th next year, and um, that's it. That's all I've got. Alright, so today is October 13th, and I just finished Can't Take That Away by Stephen Salvatore. <sighs> this book is about a genderqueer main character whose name is Carrie. They are a teenager, uh, and they are very into singing and wanting to be a diva. Their number one, like, idol is Mariah Carey for, like, the sort of vibes, I guess. Throughout this book, Carrie deals with homophobia and transphobia as they are given the part of Elphaba, Elphaba? in their school play, Wicked. I've obviously never seen Wicked. And a vocal minority, let's say, does not really enjoy that. Overall, I really appreciated this book for the story that it was trying to tell. However, I just don't think that it was what I wanted out of this book. Um, I don't like books where characters are sad or bad things happen to them, and this was a majority sad, bad things happen to them sort of book. Um, but I think that's mostly on me because I did not realize from the inside flap that this book was going to be so focused on that. I, I guess I just read Gender Queer Singer and went, yes. Um, but there was a little bit more to this than that. I ended up rating it three stars. I didn't hate it, 
but I also didn't like it. Though if this does sound like something that you would be into, I'd still recommend it. Um, it just personally was not for me. All right, it is currently October 17th, and I just finished You Wouldn't Dare by Samantha Markham. This is an arc. It comes out March... I literally just looked it up. 28? 2023? You Wouldn't Dare is about our main character whose name is Junie. She's dealing with quite a bit of problems. Let's say her mother has a boyfriend, and her mother reveals that she wants to move in with him, which means that Junie has to move in with him. Um, the only problem is her mother's boyfriend has a daughter who Junie and this girl don't really get along that well, so they're gonna have to work on that if they're going to be sharing the same space, the same house together. Also, Junie had an issue that came up in her past that forced her and her friend group to kind of split ways. Like, they're still together and they're still hanging out, but they are not as good of friends as they used to be. There's one friend in particular in this friend group who Junie was like very close to dating and then this thing happened and they now like can barely speak to each other. There's quite a few issues that this book focuses on. It's very character focused though, very day-to-day -day life rather than a specific plot. One of my favorite things about this book is actually how it was written because most books follow a things get better and better for the character until something really bad happens and then things get better after that. Whereas this book seemed to follow more of like a things get worse and worse and then things get better. And I really liked that, how different that is from other books that I have read and how it just seems harder to write that kind of story. Like, it, it sounds easy explaining it, but I feel like it's more difficult to write something like that. Um, and so I just kind of appreciate that Samantha Markham did that. I ended up really liking this book. I rated it four stars. The only reason why it's not a five-star read for me is because I'm not that obsessive over it, um, but I still thought it was very good and I really liked the story, where it was going, I liked the characters. It focuses very heavily on Beatrice and Benedict from What You Do About Nothing, which they're my favorite Shakespeare characters, so thank you for that inclusion. It was just overall a pretty good book. I really liked it. I'm gonna run out of space on this SD card and I just put this SD card in a couple of days ago. <laughs> like, that's a lot of talking I've done. Anyway, today is October 24th and I just finished The Renaissance of Gwen Hathaway by Ashley Schumacher. Um, this book is an arc. It doesn't come out until March 14th, just in case it sounds interesting to you. The Renaissance of Gwen Hathaway is about our main character, whose name is Maddie. First of all, Gwen's not even a character in this book, but we'll get to that. All through her life, like her parents went around the world and they participated in a bunch of different Renaissance festivals. And so she grew up going to different Renaissance festivals and participating, helping her parents with the shop. A year, almost a year before the events of this book takes place, her mother dies of cancer. Um, and so this book focuses on Maddie going to her mother's favorite renaissance festival and kind of coming to terms with the fact that her mother is gone and also that the world has moved on without her mother. There are a couple of changes, major changes, to this renaissance festival and she is quite surprised by how everything has changed since the year before. Um, while she's at this Renaissance festival, she meets this bard whose name is Arthur, and he kind of immediately takes a liking to her. He begins calling her Gwen, doesn't even ask her name. He's just like, you're Gwen, um, for the Arthur and Guinevere, you know, thing. His parents 
are the new owners of this renaissance festival and they really want a princess to be in the royal court like they're both the kings of this renaissance festival and they wanted a prince but arthur doesn't want to be prince so he's like instead i'll find you a princess uh, and so he goes up to maddie and is like congrats you're gonna be the princess and she's like no so this book is largely about them becoming friends uh her being princess at this renaissance festival and her moving on from her mother's death and like allowing herself to live in the world i ended up reading this book three stars. I really liked Arthur as a character, but I felt like Maddie was a little too bland. Um, like there wasn't that much going for her. Her entire character could simply be summed up by her mother's dead and she's fat. And so like the entire book, everything about the book was just one of those two things. Whereas I feel like Arthur had a lot more going for him. Um, he was I kind of want to say he was a lot more like vibrant but not in a color way like I don't know he was just a lot more three-dimensional just a better character to read from um a lot more interesting of a character perhaps I haven't even told you about the wise and old wizard oh my god that's kind of a big important part of why I didn't like this book as much um the prologue of this book has a 10 year old Maddie meeting somebody whose name is the wizened old wizard. He is a very rare occurrence in Renaissance festivals. Uh, he like, if you see him, that's probably the only time you're ever going to see him. So Maddie sees him when she is 10 years old and he gives her the advice to tame the world and then disappears. Um, and so like, the prologue puts a lot of emphasis on the wise and old wizard and makes it seem like this book is going to be about Maddie searching for the wise and old wizard and like her character development is going to focus around having another conversation with him and um figuring out what exactly he means by tame the world and then the wise and old wizard never comes up again in the book like there's a small single sentence where we talk about him um but otherwise after the prologue he doesn't really have anything to do with the story so i think i just had different ideas of where this story was going to go uh instead of like where it went uh and i thought it was going to be a bit more exciting of a book than it actually was like i said i really liked arthur as a character i thought he was fun and i was also very interested in the wise and old wizard subplot that I thought we were going to have but by the end of the book I wasn't really all that into it um wasn't really enjoying myself just sort of forced myself through the book just so I could say that I finished it because after like the 50% mark you might as well finish it you're halfway through um and so I ended up reading this book three stars good beginning kind of a mediocre ending it's the 29th and we're getting really close to the end of October <laughs> Today I just finished Not the Witch You Wed by April Asher. I didn't like it. Let's let's just put it there. Um, Not the Witch You Wed is the story of a girl named Violet. She is the eldest of three siblings, three daughters, I guess. Um, and there is this sort of rule in the supernatural world that the eldest of three daughters who are also witches is going to be something called the prima uh which is i don't know how to explain it like the most powerful witch the one who creates the rules for all witches in the world um except her only problem is violet doesn't have any magic she has never in her life had magic she is 32 However, one day as she is talking to like the council who oversees all supernatural affairs, let's say, uh, they say, according to the rules, you are the eldest of three witches, three sibling witches. Um, and so like you have to get married and you have to be basically mated to somebody. Um, 
And she's like, well, that shouldn't apply to me because I don't have any magic, so it's not really gonna do any good. And they're like, yeah, but like, according to the rules, um, you have to, you know, get made it to someone. We'll give you three months to figure it out. Her childhood best friend is a guy named Lincoln. He is a werewolf. He's also the alpha of the North American pack. And um, he's kind of having similar problems. There is a council of elders in werewolf society and they are saying, listen, dude, you're turning 33 like real soon. Um, you need a mate. And so the two of them, Violet and Lincoln, decide that they are going to fake date until they can figure out these issues. I will say that this book was very funny, it was humorous, um, but it, it didn't really go anywhere. I can't say that I really ever cared for the characters, I didn't care for their relationship. The ending was stupid. Like, it, it was just, let's throw something out there solely because it is convenient. But if you think about it, like, if this was the answer to this problem, why wasn't it there in the very beginning? I just, I did not like it. I ended up rating this book two stars. Uh, and I think the most unfortunate thing is that I have an arc of the sequel to this book, which I know, like, it focuses on Violet's sister. So I know it's not like a direct sequel to Violet and Lincoln's story, um, but I read this book basically to get myself immersed into this world and to figure out what background information I may need for the sequel, and now I'm not excited for it, so. Also, since it is the 29th, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to finish another book before the end of the month, um, but I will let you know in the next clip, of course. Like, I have two days, and I could probably finish a book by then but I'm not 100% sure, um, so we'll, we'll see. For you, it will be five seconds. For me, it will be two days. Um, but I'm really hoping that I will. It's October 31st and I did it. I finished that one last book. I'm so happy. I really didn't want it to be a book that I finished November 1st. I was like, I can do this. I believe in myself. I'm gonna get it done tonight. And I did. This book that I'm talking about is Just My Type by Fallon Ballard. Uh, it is an arc. It comes out February 7th. If this explanation portion sounds like something that you'd be into, February 7th is your date. This book is about a girl named Lana. Uh, she works in the dating and relationships column of an online newspaper, um, blogging community sort of thing like BuzzFeed, I guess. She's having a little bit of a rough day. Her boyfriend breaks up with her. The next morning, she walks into the office of her work and she finds out that another ex-boyfriend of hers who is like the ex-boyfriend, like the one who broke her heart and changed her to be the person that she is today, is in the office of her, like her boss's office. And he is the new hire. And not only that, but her boss decides it'd be a really cool, really fun idea if the two of them uh, make a list for each other of like... Because our main character, Lana, gets into her two relationships really fast and never really spends a moment single, whereas her ex, Seth, never gets into relationships and always has like one night stands and stuff, her boss, their boss, thinks that it'd be really interesting for them to make a list of like 10 things in order to get themselves out of these, I guess, funks or these rules that they have for themselves. And um, there's a ladybug flying around my room. I was trying so hard to not get distracted by it, but then it started coming closer and I was like, listen, you're allowed to live here because I give up on trying to get the ladybugs out of my room. Like just, when it gets warmer outside, you can leave, I guess. Um, 
but it started coming towards me and I was like, I do not mind smacking you. There's also one on my flag just over here I'm, that uh, has not moved in about an hour and I think it died there. Either that or it's the chillest ladybug I have ever seen in my entire life. Um, they have a list of 10 things that they need to do uh, and they're going to write a series of articles on it for the next 10 weeks doing each thing on the list and uh, basically talking about their experience and at the end whoever has the most engagement on their posts, whoever the audience likes more is going to get a full-time position at a bigger newspaper that owns this smaller online journalism website. This book focuses a lot on the relationship between Lana and Seth from when they were in high school, but it never shows that relationship. Like, it just says they were dating in high school, uh, they really loved each other, they thought they were going to be, like, together forever, and then they broke up. And that really messed with both of them and changed them into who they are today. But we never actually get anything into their past relationship, we just get where they are now. And so I felt like I couldn't really care for these characters because it felt like so much of them was about this past relationship and I knew nothing about it. Another thing is this book focuses a lot on miscommunication, not only between Lana and Seth, but also like Lana and her boss and Lana and her mother and how those little miscommunications change Lana's day-to-day -day life. Throughout most of this book, I was just reading it because I need to read it. I have an art copy of it and I feel bad DNFing arcs, you know? Um, I will say though that the ending was pretty solid and I really enjoyed myself with it. Around 70% of the way through the book, I started getting a little bit into it, but that's way too long before you start getting into it. I ended up rating this book 2.5 stars. I mostly did not like it, but like I said, the ending was solid. I also don't think that just because I didn't like it doesn't mean that you're not going to like it. Like, I think somebody out there is going to absolutely love this book and it's going to be their favorite book in the entire world. I don't think it's irredeemable, um, but I do, like, personally, I did not enjoy it. But if this sounds like something that you'd be into, February 7th, again, is the day that Just My Type comes out. Anyway, it's October 31st at, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock. I'm not going to finish another book tonight. I'm about to hop into one, like, page one hop into it, um, and I highly doubt I'm going to read the entirety of it tonight before midnight. So I'm going to end this video here. Those were all the books that I read in October. To be honest, looking back at it, October was not a very good reading month, both in, like, quantity and quality of reading, uh, but Here's hoping November I read a lot of really good books that I really like. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again in the future. Maybe in November's video you can see all the books that I read and absolutely adored. Um, you can either find me here on YouTube where I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday, or anywhere else on social media. All of my main accounts are detailed in my end card. They're also in the description if you want a clickable link. So you can take all these social media accounts that I have, take all the social media accounts that you have, link them together, and I will see you again in the future.